Hello there, today the pieces we're looking at aren't just helmet accessories, but we're also looking at hair accessories, goggles from themes as old as power miners, and also the infinity gauntlet, which might all have something in common you didn't realize. So what we have here getting straight into the video today is my draw, well, I guess it's half a draw, half of this is ones, and we've even got a little baby Harry, I think that is, down there, that might, no, it is a baby Harry, but we've got all of my helmet accessories, as you can see, big Star Wars fan, mostly clone or rebel accessories in here, and what I have done is I have picked the widest range of pieces I've got, I mean, we have pieces from all different themes, we have of course the Star Wars ones at the top, we have some Disney princess tiaras, I think these are ones I got from the Sleeping Beauty poly bag, we've then got Mickey's hat, We've got another one of these, so perhaps we can put that away. We've got a scuba diving mask here, which is from, I think this is from my bathtub bike that I got. Another Star Wars accessory. We've got a visor. I guess it's from Star Wars, but it's also used for a lot of cyclists and that. We've got a little floof of sorts here. We've got the Power Miners goggles, which is probably the oldest out of this because I don't have any of my old clone accessories. And... A flower which not only can be used as a flower but also as a nice hair accessory and actually i guess we'll start with the flower and get it out of the way because it's the most unique of these pieces in the sense that it is its own piece you can see the hole inside the regular flower plate just there is the exact same size as this pin on the back of the flower and it's the same size connector we will be seeing throughout this video so i don't know the exact sizes but what this gap in this flower stud allows us to do is to take one of these stem pieces push it through the flower and to keep it on there without worrying of it falling off so if we were to take a longer flower piece such as this one here which does have a stud connector on the back what you can see is there's still a gap at the top and this is what allows us to put this hair accessory right on top and I guess it's not representing any sort of real flower or at least any that I know of but I think it does make a cool accessory especially if you want to make a small bunch of flowers or perhaps one flower with a few leaves around it you can take this stem piece here not too common of a piece especially not compared to the piece we've just looked at but the flower does clip in the middle and now we've got one flower with few leaves and this is the smallest bouquet of flowers you can make in Lego, at least without just stacking up a bunch of studs. And before I am done with the flowers, if we clip them back to this flower, you can actually just have a stack of colourful flowers. If you wanted to mix and match the colours, you can see I've got two shades of pink here, and I think it turns out pretty well, though. If you had one of these on each of these stems, it might get a bit hectic, and that does also mean that you can connect these plant pieces to the stems down here and perhaps stack a few up to make a bush so that would be really really cool but it's not the only connection that we are interested in as all of these pieces in one way or another have some sort of i i guess the visors don't quite but have some sort of tiny pin on the bottom you can see this feather piece here has it mickey's house also has it on the bottom the crown all of these have that connector so in theory you could grab say the crown the hat and whack it also on this flower piece which i think is very interesting it allows for a load of combinations as does lego with most things but it also allows you to build really cool things such as a door handle for this one by four door this also works with the one by three doors and I think we've even got one by two doors, little refrigerator doors in a few of the city creator sets. So this is really cool because this is probably the most realistic looking door handle we can get in Lego. And I guess really the alternative to this is just using a one by two slope, which really doesn't fit with what it's meant to represent. Now, because the stud doesn't have a gap through it, we can't put it straight into the door and do need to use this one by one piece which is the exact same as this green piece here the small bricks are definitely the hardest to show off on camera but hopefully you can see what sort of piece it is that i'm using and 
all we have to do is grab one of our visors, blue and green, just to show the difference between the two pieces. And it goes straight into the end of the stud like this. Because it's using the same sort of connection, I must assume that this is a legal piece. This isn't stressing out the bricks as far as I'm aware, but as LEGO is accurate to two two thousandths, there's not going to be anything that I see. So for now, this is assumed legal and is a really cool connector, not just for the handles of doors, but also for certain accessories like this vinyl record player here that I've created. Perhaps this could go at the front of someone's house and this is more of an interior design. And I do have to say, Lego have included two vinyls in sets, but one of them was a designer's exclusive. So I guess they didn't have to fact check that like some of the public release sets. But in Sonic's DJ booth for one of the Sonic sets, they had the antenna bit of the vinyl this way rather than the other way now forgive me if this is something that goes on somewhere in the rest of the world but all the vinyl players that i have owned have definitely spun in this direction and if the needle was scratching the vinyl in the anti-clockwise motion then this would just scratch up the vinyl and wear it down you wouldn't hear anything but screeching so Finals are, to my knowledge, meant to be played this way. Silly mistake that's just gone past a few of the LEGO checkers and hopefully something that we see corrected in a set in the future. Perhaps we've already seen a vinyl player in a LEGO set that has the needle in the right direction. But for Sonic and the LEGO Designer Summit set, which was where we got the first iteration of the Purple Spaceman, which I have done a review on that set. I built it myself, so... Do search for designers exclusive on my channel to find that set. I'm sure it'll pop up. If not, it's not that far back if you want to search. But this helmet accessory viewfinder rangefinder is a perfect vinyl needle and does look really cool with all the other little details such as the door handle and Really, you could probably get away with using this for a few other places. Now, I'll put them to the side. I'll keep them back here so that we know how many different ways we have connected them before and try not to throw them around. But the next one is somewhat similar to the interior design for a house because I've got a few little toys for your minifigures here. Not the perfect plane. I know I could definitely have made this plane a bit better with a bit more time, but I didn't want to spend too much time on it. I've got a few different mocks that I'm still working on for upcoming videos. So I've had together this simple plane and on the end of this one by one stud with the bar coming out, I've whacked a propeller. That is right. We also have a propeller piece with the exact same miniature pin connector. I'm going to call it a micro pin connector because we have the Technic pin. Then we have a few different Lego bar connectors like you can see on the bottom of this flower stem which I guess you could consider a system pin. We've got the Technic pin, we've got the Lego system pin, and now we have the micro pin. The propeller does spin if you were to spin it by hand. It's not loose enough that you can just hit it and like with all the Technic pin connectors, just let it spin for hours. But it makes a nice little model plane. You can definitely include this, probably even on the back of a boat as a propeller, and that would look really cool. But for a boat design, I've actually gone with this same Lego clone viewfinder rangefinder accessory. I keep forgetting which one that is called. It's either a viewfinder rangefinder or is mistakenly known as both. And I've used it to act as a rudder on this little sailboat, which I kind of built to represent the one we got in the CMF. But when you're downscaling it, it's a bit harder to do. But as you can see, the rudder is connected to the bottom of this 1x3 plate and this doesn't just work with the 1x plates but also the 1x tiles because they've still got these little holes underneath and as you can see it's a very small connection and if you do nudge it like I did there it does fall out but all you've got to do is push it right back in and it holds it pretty well enough that it can be upside down and waved about or held upside down perhaps in a younger minifigure's arms just be careful when you're nudging it and it should be okay now of course most of these are helmet accessories and we haven't really taken a look at any of the helmets yet you can see i do have one of the older helmets here and if we were to take this visor which comes with cody it comes with vaughn and try and pop it on the helmet though it doesn't sink right through the helmet so there might be a little bit of stress put on it 
it does definitely clip on the helmet in fact let's grab another one and see if we can put two on it as it is this rebel sort of half helmet that we've got here so we'll clip another one on that side and as you can see the visors do fit on this helmet which can lead to some interesting color combinations on the bottom but this isn't really the important one as we take a look at this death trooper helmet that i've got of course we know that these accessories clip on and off but what we're interested in now is whether the reverse is possible can we take something like these goggles from the original helmets and for the new updated 2020 style clone troopers take their helmets even and clip a visor to it and as you can see it's possible the goggles don't go all the way down and that is just because for these mando helmets the helmet does come out towards the front and that just means there's not enough space to bring the goggles completely down and that will be a similar story with the clones in fact i do have four trusty assistants in the 212 troopers just off the camera here which i'm going to be clipping all the different accessories to and seeing which one works best because recently in a bad batch episode we saw a stormtrooper i think it might have even been a phase two clone with the black goggles on its helmet so it'd be interesting to see if we can clip them on of course no helmet holes for the stormtroopers as of yet i'm sure at some point that will probably change hopefully when they line up the helmet holes with the helmets it's not a problem that I think Lego should consider fixing right now because there's a few other things I'd like them to tackle first like the paper bags in all of their Star Wars sets but it's definitely an odd choice that they decided to include a helmet hole and the round bit on the side of the helmet on the older helmets they were one and the decision to split them is not a decision that I think they should have made so lightly but as you can see the goggles definitely make this clone look a bit silly but they do work, they fit on the helmet, so technically it is a legal build again that is right now as far as we are aware. I have no idea where that cobble piece went. Of course, as with all things, what's considered a legal technique at one stage may eventually become an illegal technique before you know it. And these goggles are seemingly a bit harder to clip on. I think I'm not getting it in the helmet hole on this side so it's not an easy connector but i wouldn't consider the visors to be too easy of a connector of course the thing that the visors have that these bits don't is the slightly longer pins in the side of them which just enables me to play around a bit more without trying to ping off the helmet accessory so perhaps we'll have to come back to that but let's take the visor from the rebel helmet and see if we can at least whack that over the top so what i'm trying to do to whack the helmets on is like with the visors use the roundness of the helmet to help me just slip it over the hole and it does seem to be a lot more awkward than i feel like it should be i don't think it's as hard putting the visors on as it is trying to get these pieces so you can definitely see which is made for which but again you're not applying any pressure to the helmet holes here or the helmet accessories or anything we don't want to break any of the lego pieces and there we go we have this nice visor over clone number two now as i said the power miners goggles are the oldest of these glasses elements that i own in my collection and just to prove that the helmet accessories haven't really changed that much over time you can also clip this one on and now we have some goggles above the helmet so perhaps this is the closest we'll get to the new clone trooper we got in the bad batch with the goggles on amazing helmet design i definitely love to see a few more helmets in lego of course we did get the fives clone trooper in the tentative boarding which is really cool to see that lego are considering building more but they did say early early on that all the figures coming out as these 25th anniversary minifigures are clones that they definitely would not see a reason for putting in sets so i guess that it means we're not going to get too many too soon at least not until there's a big anniversary of the clone wars which to be fair 20 years in 2028 perhaps we'll see a few more on our shelves but let me just check that that is all the way i guess if you push it down too far it does still spring off but now we have our squadron of these wacky 212 clones and as you can see They've all got different accessory pieces. I think my favourite has to be the goggles, the second one in, because 
that just looks so sleek on the helmet. The other two beside it look a bit goofy, but we also have this visor here, which is a pretty cool accessory for just a different trooper if you wanted to switch it up and also does cover the eye holes. So I'll definitely be considering including these in a mock in the future, especially one where the clones are concerned, because I think these do look really cool. But if we now push these to the side, there is one other accessory I'd like to consider for the helmets. And before we get there, we've said about these popping into the pinholes in the flowers and about the different pins going into the helmets. Did you know that Lego Star Wars helmets technically grow on plants? Well, at least now they do, and you can clip them to the plants yourself. So that's a fun little fact that I've literally only just realized in making this video. So sometimes the best things really aren't planned for. Perhaps he's got a twig stuck in the side of his helmet, or it's just a new accessory that perhaps we haven't seen too much of yet. You can get all the other pinholes in the side of the helmets. That means the flowers, the tiaras, and even these special little feather pieces, which this is actually off of one of the CMFs. Now, this is a different type of hat. As it's got this pinhole in the side, you can have flowers, you can have any of these clone accessories coming out, and even put a little viewfinder in the side bit there. But of course, it doesn't work as well with the minifigure as this feather. I feel like it's just not as customizable as the clones, but some minifigures that are customizable are these two right here. As you can see, they do have the exact same hairpiece. This is Lieutenant Connix from Star Wars. I think this is from the Rise of Skywalker. And this is one of the latest Series 25 CMFs. And they both have the pinhole in the top. I do believe this is not only a great hairpiece for Leia in Return of the Jedi, but also comes from one of the Lego friend sets because typically whenever a hair piece comes from the Lego friend sets they don't modify it for City and you have a bunch of different accessories in the top. This is where you can fit headphones, you can fit flowers, you can even fit different pieces like the tiaras that just slot into this hair piece and once again it's sort of made for these different pieces so it does make sense that you can fit them pieces in but you can also get these Star Wars accessories in as they do have the exact same pieces but with the different textures of the hair it's a bit harder for them to stick and ends up just looking a bit goofy. And the last CMF we've got here with the different connector is actually this reindeer. The helmet isn't one piece, the antlers are disconnectable which in this case isn't just good for putting things in but you can also take off the antlers and you've got some sort of doe costume now rather than the reindeer, or perhaps even a reindeer, is that a female reindeer? Now we move on to the final piece of the video, the Infinity Gauntlet. Of course, you can see the Infinity Stones have the same piece which connects in, which does mean that you can connect these Infinity Stones to the stem pieces, and I guess Infinity Stones now also grow on trees, or at least on the plants around them. But once again, that means you can take any of the accessories from today's video. So if I can find one of these little clone ones, even a tiara or a feather, and we can clip that in. And what's really awesome about this is, first off, it doesn't seem to stick unlike the rest. But once you can get it to stick, which is a bit more fragile than the other pieces. But what you could do is take off these three Infinity Stones, whack three of these visors here, and suddenly Wolverine's got his own gauntlet. So I think that is really cool, and it might be a bit difficult to stick. Of course, a lot of these I have used in my clones, so they're not going to have as fresh connectors as if you got some new ones. But you can definitely fit some different pins in there, and you can see all of the different elements. I now realise that the camera is a little wonky, so... Let me fix that up for you. But now that it's straightened up, right at the end of the video, you can see all the different connectors we've got. I think my favourite is this 212 Clone Trooper with goggles. But let me know down below which is your favourite connector. I think a close second has to be this vinyl record player because it's a really sleek design and only takes up two by three pieces, which I guess is the same as if you used an antenna, but just looks that much more realistic. So let me know down in the comments what is your favourite. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, may the bricks be with you.